hey guys welcome back to my channel once again my name is omoyera olua Tosin. and if this is your first time or stumbling on my channel please support me by clicking on the subscription button and also on the notification box so that once i upload a new video you'll be among the first person to get the notification i got a review from a returning subscriber that my recording are so fast that it's always took her a while to get what i'm saying and i've also got reviews like that in the past from now on i'm going to start recording slowly for you guys to get uh, the message i'm trying to pass to you in my searching and on the channel today i am going to show you how to cut and sew a classic lunch bubble also known as a kimono gown and if this is a tutorial you're interested in please keep on watching this is the kimono dress that we are going to be illustrating in the video you can see that it has a launch design at the center front of the gown these are the measurements you'll be needing for this tutorial the materials and tools you'll be needing is one you'll be working with your tape measure you can see the one i have in the video that is my tape measure you need a ruler uh, I'm working with my pattern master. You need a chalk to hold and mark your measurement. I need your fabric scissors to cut out your pattern. So I'm going to set this aside and we are going to take the measurement. Now, the first thing you must do, you must create a top line or the shoulder line where all your measurements will be taken from. So the first thing I did, I came down from the edge of the fabric by half an inch to create a straight line so that i can take the full length of the gown and this is going to be the shoulder line i ended up not using this line why because if i take my measurement from this shoulder line my savage edge at the end of this fabric will be cut off because i want the savage edge to be at the hem of this gown I'm not going to take the measurement like this from the top edge, from the line that we just drew, because I want my savage edge to be in the dress. Now I'm going to take it from the M. Now my client's full length is 57.5. I'm going to add 1.5 inches to the 57.5. One inches for aiming and half inches for sewing the shoulder line. Now I'm going to mark 50 nine inches and that is what you saw me marking i marked 59 inches and i wrote a straight line along my mark points so this is the line this is our new shoulder line ignore the first one that we did now the next thing you want to do you want to mark your neck with i am using 3.5 inches and that is standard for slim people and medium size um, clients but if your size is if your client is of a plus size please use four inches now you want to mark the nip to sleeve measurement on that straight line and that is the width of your, our food we use the nip to sleeve measurement plus two inches what I'm trying to say is that you're going to place the table at the center back of your neck and then you are going to measure up to your sleeve where you want your sleeve to stop and you're going to add uh, 2 inches to that measurement. That is the width of the foot. After marking the nib to sleeve measurement on the straight line, you are going to come down 3 inches from that mark point and you connect it to your neck point now for the sleeve opening i am using 10 inches now i'm just connecting that three inches slant to my neck point like the way you see me doing in the video that's what you are going to do as well mark the nip to sleeve on the shoulder line then you come down three inches and connect that mark point to your neck point now for my sleeve opening i'm going to use 10 inches Please don't forget to add your 1 inches seam allowance. So what you're going to mark here is 11 inches. Extend a line from that point into the fabric like the way you see me doing in the video. 
now from that edge point you're going to come in six inches it's the standard for all sizes six inches and i'm going to mark this amount up to the m and once i am done i'm going to connect this six inches mark point with a straight line up to the m so you come in with any ruler of your choice to draw a straight line Cut the side seam into the sleeve like so. We are done drafting the back pattern of this bubble gown. Now the next thing you want to do is go in with your scissors and cut out the pattern. We are going to use this back pattern to cut the front pattern. I'm colder than the day you met me in the dark. I feel the air around me as it starts to move. I realize I never had that much to lose. To lose. Show me. This is what your pattern should look like at the end of it. This is your neckline, your shoulder line. Please pin your pattern together so that it won't be flying around like mine is doing. So this is what you should have at the end of the day. So we are going to use this back pattern to cut out the front pattern. I have placed the back on the front. If you notice at the center front, I extended a line one inches you can see we have the fabric one inches forward before we place the back on the center front of the front pattern the one inches is going to account for the launch gathered effect that we are going to have at the center front of this tutorial now we are just going to make little alteration in this pattern for the neck depth of the front pattern, we are going to come down four and a half inches or four inches. So now that's what I did here, and I'm going to mark the neck points and connect these two points with a curve line. The shoulder is the same, the size seam is the same. Now you're going to go in with your scissors and cut out the pattern. And this is what your pattern should look like at the end of the day. At the center front, we have one inch extension, and that one inch extension is going to account for the launch that we're going to have at the center front of this tutorial. Please, if you are here to follow me or like my video, please give it a thumb up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and tell me what to do in our next video. Now I went out to cut a strip that is no more than one and a half inches in width and the length is I think I cut out up to 80 inches or 120 depend on how long you want the loop that is going into the center form to be. Now the first thing I did was sew the side seam and use a bias tape to conceal the neckline to finish the neckline and this is what the pattern is looking like you are going to sew the shoulder line first then you are going to use the bias tape to finish the neckline of the bubu and this is what you should have as well now after you've done that you're, this is what you should have I actually took a picture of what yours should look like go ahead and sage all your side or your shoulder seam as well now i went ahead to sew the center front and this is what it looked like i went ahead to sage it as well and i top stitched it down half an inch on both sides you can see i'll sew the center front of the bubble and i create a channel on both sides of the center front half an inch and this is what it is looking like at this point is give it a nice press if you want and then i'm going to use the bolt cake threader to pass my loop through the channel that i created 
and this is what I did. I passed it from the upper, from the up to the down. Then, and this is what is looking like at the down part. I went ahead to end my dress using one inch seam allowance that I added to the end of this dress. And this is what is looking like after passing the look. So this is the finished look of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumb up, like and share my video. We went ahead to sage and top stitch the two inches in allowance that we added to the sleeve and this is what it is looking like in the video this is what the sleeve part is looking like and this is what the front part of the ranch bubble is looking like this is the down part of the tutorial you can pull to create more effect thanks for watching have a nice day and